Hi, I'm Zeev Scully, a PhD student at CMU, and today I'm going to tell you how to schedule jobs in multi-server systems when job sizes are unknown. This is joint work with my colleague Isaac Grossoff and advisor Moore Harkle-Balter. So today's talk is going to be about the MGK queue, which is a multi-server queuing model. I'm going to start by introducing its single server version, the MG1. So in the MG1, we've got one server, which can serve a job at a time, and a queue that can hold any number of waiting jobs. So in this talk, this is what a job looks like. It's going to be a test tube whose height is its size or service requirement. And as we serve a job, we're going to represent that as filling the test tube with water. So the amount of service a job has received so far, that's the water level, we're going to call that its age, and the rest of the job is its remaining size. So we have jobs randomly arriving over time. Specifically, there's a distribution X from which each job size is independently drawn. We've got Poisson arrivals at rate lambda, and this gives the system load rho equals lambda times E of X. And this load has to be less than one for the system to be stable. Okay, and today we're talking about scheduling. So the scheduling policy is what decides which job gets to be in service, and it does so preemptively. So we can decide at any moment to switch which job's in service, and there's no delay or loss of work for doing this. Okay, so that's the MG1. The MGK is the same idea, but now we've got K servers instead of just one. And we're gonna use the convention that each of these servers has speed one over K. So the total server speed is always one, no matter what K is. And this means that we always have the same stability condition, load must be less than one. So in the MGK, the main difference in scheduling is that now we get to choose up to k jobs to be in service. So we're trying to optimally schedule in the MGK. The metric we're interested in is called response time. So an individual job's response time is the time for when that job first enters the system to when it leaves, all complete. And now this includes both time it spends at the server as well as time it spends waiting in the queue. And this is going to be greatly influenced by the scheduling policy. So our goal in this talk is to, is to design a scheduling policy to minimize the mean response time, that is the average response time taken over all individual jobs. So let's talk a bit about what's known in this space. So I'm going to make a small chart with rows for both the single server and multi-server case. Let's start with the setting of known job sizes. That is, when each job comes in the, into the system, it announces how large it is. So if you've got a single server and known sizes, the classic result is that a policy called SRPT, shortest remaining processing time, is optimal. This always serves the job of least remaining size. In the multi-server case, the situation is a lot more complicated. In work that we presented actually two years ago at Performance in 2018, we showed that the K server version of SRPT which we call SRPTK, is optimal not all the time in the MGK, but under certain conditions in heavy traffic, that is, as load approaches capacity. And SRPTK, what it does is it just serves the K jobs of least remaining size, as opposed to just the single uh, least remaining. Okay, so that's the case of known sizes. Today we're going to discuss the unsolved case of unknown sizes. So before we dive into the details, let's talk about what it even means to schedule jobs of unknown sizes, right? What information do we even have? We don't know the heights of the test tubes. Those are unknown. So what do we have? Well, we can track how long we've served each job so far. So we can figure out each job's age. And by looking at, for example, historical data, it's also reasonable to assume that we know the distribution of job sizes. So scheduling with unknown job sizes amounts to leveraging the job size distribution X and each job's age in order to make smart scheduling decisions. So it turns out that in the MG1, it's known how to do this optimally to minimize mean response time using a policy called Gittins. So the Gittins policy works like this. It's used, it uses what's called a rank function to assign each job a priority or rank based on its age, the amount of service it's received so far. And we're going to use the convention that lower rank is better. So here's the rank function of Gittins. It's a kind of complicated formula, but what you need to see is that it uses the job size distribution. And so 
So for each job size distribution, Gittins constructs this rank function, and then it uses each job's age, plugs them into the rank function to get the priorities. And that's how Gittins works. So just to be very clear about how scheduling with ranks works, let's say we've got these two jobs at these two ages, which the rank function maps to these two ranks. Which job do we serve? We serve the one of lower rank. So that's the job on the right, or the one of greater age to start. And then once its rank exceeds that of the other job, we switch and start serving the other one. Okay, so that's the Gittins policy, and it's optimal for minimizing mean response time in the MG1. So what about the MGK? Well, it turns out that even in heavy traffic, for general job size distributions, we don't know the answer. But looking at this chart, there's a pretty reasonable guess for what the answer might be. What if instead of just serving the job of best Gittins rank, we served the top K best Gittins ranks? That would give us a policy we might call Gittins K. So let's ask, does Gittins K minimize mean response time in the M heavy traffic MGK? Well, the techniques in the state, the state of the art techniques for proving such a result look like this. We'd have to compare the K server Gittins K policy to a single server version, which is Gittins in the MG1. We're going to call that Gittins 1. So we're trying to compare Gittins K to Gittins 1. And remember our assumption uh, that the K servers each have speed 1 over K. So that means that both of these systems actually have total server speed 1, which means that there's some hope that these systems are kind of close enough together, at least in heavy traffic, um, that they might be close enough so that the Gittins K performance mirrors that of Gittins 1. Unfortunately, we weren't able to show this for Gittins K. What we were able to do instead was to patch Gittins K, kind of apply a band-aid, create a new version of Gittins called M Gittins, and it turns out that M Gittins K, this new, new flavor of Gittins, is close enough to Gittins 1. So what we were able to prove is that in the heavy traffic limit, the mean response time of M Gittins K, that's a MGK policy, is asymptotically equivalent to that of Gittins 1, the optimal MG1 policy. And because we can, and, and because one big server is in our preemp, free preemption model is more powerful than K small servers, this implies heavy traffic optimality for M Gittins K. So, in the rest of the talk, what I'm going to tell you about is how we came up with M Gittins. So I'm going to tell you first what goes wrong with Gittins K, how that inspires the definition of M Gittins, and then how that helps, how M Gittins helps. So let's start with talking about what goes wrong with Gittins K. So the thing that goes wrong is we can't show it's close enough to Gittins 1. So we actually need to start with Gittins 1 and how to analyze its mean response time. So I'm not going to give the full analysis, just the rough idea. So recall that Gittins schedules using a rank function with the convention that lower is better. And it turns out that to analyze its mean response time, it suffices to consider a generic jobs story. So let's say I'm a generic job of size x. And I arrive and I see two jobs a and b in the system. And maybe another job c will arrive later. So let's say that this is the moment when I arrive. To figure out my response time, I need to figure out how much do each of jobs a and b bother me. Let's start with a. So it turns out that in my whole time in the system, from age 0 to age x, I never have rank worse than this gray line. I'm always at or below this gray line. A is already above this gray line, so I will always outrank A. So I can just pretend A doesn't exist. I can completely ignore it. All right, what about B? Well, it turns out I am going to have to wait for B some of the time. So at the start, I have priority over B. But then we tie. And actually, at, and this is a sort of unstable tie. Whenever one of us gets served for an instant, the other gets served. The, the other has better rank, and then so the server actually keeps switching between me and B and ends up serving us both in a sharing style up until the peak of this rank function at an age we'll call Y of X. Okay, so at this peak, it now actually becomes important how we break the tie between me and B because whoever gets served first at this peak is going to go through this whole valley in the rank function. And so we're going to use the convention that we break ties first come first serve. And so B is going to go through this whole valley of the rank function. It's going to get served until it crosses the gray line at an age we'll call Z of X. Okay, so now that B is above the gray line, 
Just like A, I can pretend it doesn't exist. So now I'm functionally alone in the system. So I get the full attention of the server and maybe new job C comes and bothers me for a little bit, but eventually I will complete and exit the system. Okay, so what are the key factors that determined which jobs bothered me and how much? The way I like to think about it is at a certain point for every job, I can ignore it. So I can ignore jobs A and B after a certain age. I can ignore jobs C after a certain age. It turns out that the, dis that the most important thing is whether a job is old, that was in the system when I arrived, or is new, namely was uh, arrived after me. Okay, so let's start with old jobs. When could I ignore jobs A and B? I could ignore them when they crossed the gray line, which happens after age Z effects. Cool, how about new jobs? Well, jobs, new jobs, because I win the first come first serve tiebreaker, they don't have to cross the gray line, they just have to touch it. And once they touch it, I can ignore them for, for the rest of my time in the system. And so the new jobs will touch the gray line after age Y of X. Cool, so these two numbers, the old job and new job age cutoffs, these are the most important quantities for figuring out mean response time. So now we're going to see how these quantities differ for Gittins k. So I'm going to go through a very similar example, but now um, and I'm going to ask the same two questions. When can I ignore old jobs? When can I ignore new jobs? But now I've got k equals two servers, which is going to spice things up. So it turns out that for old jobs, the answer is still the same. The answer is still z of x. So let's talk about new jobs. So in my example, I'm going to arrive first, I'm going to receive some service, and then a new job C will arrive. Now at this point, there are two jobs in the system and K equals two servers. So we both get service. Cool. And now maybe uh, D arrives. Okay, so at this point, the two jobs of best rank get service. That's job D and job C. C has better rank than me. So it and D get to be in service. And notice what just happened. Job C is after age Y of X but it just got prioritized over me. I can't ignore job C yet. It turns out that in the worst case, I can't ignore new jobs until they reach age X, which is much worse than the Y of X we had for Gittins one. So it turns out that this valley in the Gittins rank function, this wave um, causes a lot of problems for us. And so what we need is a version of the Gittins rank function that doesn't have waves. And that's what M Gittins is. So the M Gittins policy stands for monotonic Gittins is defined similarly to Gittins. It also uses a rank function, but we change it slightly. If this is the Gittins rank function, the M Gittins is a version that never goes down. Um, here's the formula. It's defined using a running maximum. Okay, so now let's see how using the M Gittins rank function in place of the Gittins rank function saves the day and prevents the problem we just saw. So we're going to answer the same two questions about M Gittins K. When can we ignore old and new jobs? Again, for K equals two servers. So right off the bat, let's observe that we can still use the same gray line that we were using for Gittins. We can define the same ages Y and Z, um, this time using the plateau of the rank function rather than the kind of valley. Okay, and for old jobs, it turns out the answer is still, we can ignore that after age Z of X. So let's talk about new jobs. So. I arrive, I receive some service, job C arrives, we both receive some service on the two servers, and now job D arrives. So this is the exact same scenario we just looked at. So the two jobs of best rank get served. That's going to definitely include job D. But I'm tied with C right now. Who gets service? Well, remember that we break ties in first come first serve order. And C is a new job. It arrived after me. So what that means is that I win the tiebreaker. So I and D get service. And so it turns out that I can actually now ignore new jobs as soon as they pass age Y of X. Because after age Y of X, they're going to be stuck on this plateau with me. We're going to be tied, but I'm going to win the tiebreaker. And so this gives us exactly what we wanted because it matches Gittins 1. Okay, great. So to conclude, today we talked about how to... Uh, how to schedule to minimize mean response time in the heavy traffic MGK when we've got unknown job sizes. And our key idea was to adapt the single server optimal policy, Gittins, with a new monotonic variant of it, 
which we call M Gittins, and we were able to show that this monotonic variant when applied to K servers, M Gittins K, we were able to show that that was asymptotically optimal for mean response time in the heavy traffic limit as the load approaches one. So I'd like to thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out over email. Thanks again for listening.